Alright everybody, how are we? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another Rugby Player Reacts to NBA video, believe it or not. All you basketball fans out there should love this one. It's titled 8 Times When NBA Players Actually Fight the Fans. It's got 2 million views, it was brought out this year in October and uh, well, it's about time I get back into some basketball. Now this is not about any team, any player, any game in particular, but if you guys do have some suggestions definitely hit me up in the comments section below NBA you know basketball I know a bit about I, I played you know five six seven eight years of basketball in school and I still love to go and shoot around and try and dunk and, and try and do crossovers and all sorts of stuff so Alan Iverson I know had the the original you know football style duke or rugby style duke pass someone in a game of basketball uh, I don't know that anyone before that had actually brought that into the game although you know Michael Jordan obviously did but they basically played in the same time. So guys, I haven't followed the NBA since about 2005, 2006. So that's like 13 years. The only player in the whole of the NBA, the only two players, sorry, that I do follow, three players, scratch that, on Instagram is, is LeBron James, uh, Dwayne Wade, who's retired unfortunately, but he was the player, he was my favorite player because I followed the Heat back when uh, Wade and Shaq were in it, back when they won the championship and I knew the whole team, I played with them on NBA, 2K and all that stuff, I was really into it. I lost it for a while. The three players I'm following, LeBron James, who's a highlight reel, Dwayne Wade, absolute legend, fucking legend, and uh, Stephen Adams, who's our Kiwi, our, our best New Zealand athlete in the NBA right now, playing centre for the Oklahoma City Thunder. So with all that being said, it's definitely about time we get back into NBA. This is a bit of a fun video. I am having a, an, an alcoholic beverage uh, for once on this channel. It's not illegal, or at least I don't think it is. Um, and we're actually having a, a nice wee Sauvignon Blanc called Jacob's Creek. With all that being said, uh, it's about time we get into this. Eight times when NBA players actually fight fans. Okay, let's go. Actually, I've got to, got to make sure the screen recorder's going, because that would be disastrous. Okay. Kiss my ass. <laughs> what? Yeah, kiss my ass. <laughs> my fuck. This is Vernon Maxwell, who's also known as Mad Max. Oh, we get some commentary. That's fantastic. So, already... Starting something with him doesn't sound like the best idea. He also had a locker room brawl with Gary Payton, which left two teammates that tried to break up the fight injured. A fan had been heckling Maxwell all game, and he was also yelling back. Maxwell had enough and did this in the middle of a game. Oh no. Oh yeah! Fucking hell, imagine that. Going up into the crowd, just socking him one. Right in the mouth. <laughs> it actually looked like quite a weak shot. The guy didn't even stumble or anything. Damn, man. Yeah, I wonder how much he got fined for that. Holy shit. He went up about 10 rows, got in front of the fan's face, and clocked him right in the jaw. The fan's friend instantly pushes Maxwell, and Maxwell tries to fight him too. Not until his teammate and a security guard had to pull him back. Lucky his teammate followed him up there. If you're wondering what happened to this guy, well Maxwell actually broke his jaw. And right after this incident, Maxwell was ejected from the game was suspended 10 games and fined $20,000. He commented after the game saying that the fan made racist remarks to him and made fun of his stillborn daughter, which provoked him to attack him, which would be pretty justified. But according to this fan, he claimed that he made no such remarks and only made fun of him for having 5 points midway through the third. He actually sued Maxwell for $1.4 million for one, breaking his jaw, and two, claiming he made those remarks. I couldn't find the end result of- 
this lawsuit, but a- Ah, oh, okay, sorry, the guy who got hit had a broken jaw. According to Maxwell's and the fans' attorneys, they both couldn't find any evidence supporting Maxwell's claims. So I got fined twenty grand. Said by the Maxwell hits fan. What year? Is this like nineteen eighty-five or something? Nineteen ninety-five. Holy shit! This article was literally put on the internet on February the 9th, nineteen ninety-five. Let's have a look at this. Deseret.com. Deseret News. February 9th, nineteen ninety-five. Wow, we. Provoked by punching a fan, Maxwell was suspended for at least 10 games, fined 20,000 by the NBA on Wednesday. Punching a heckler. Oh god, the internet's cool, isn't it? <laughs> really is. A fan. And nobody came to support Maxwell. So I good. don't know who to believe. That isn't the only incident of NBA players attacking fans. There is, in fact, a whole bunch of them. Ace, in fact. Like, I'm sure you all remember the most famous NBA player and fan fight, the Malice at the Palace. Which was the Malice at the Palace. All started by a hard foul by Ron Artest, or now known as... Meta World Peace. That means I know something about basketball, right? Meta World Peace. But a few moments later, a fan throws a cup of beer at Artest, and Artest charges the wrong guy. The guy oh. who actually threw the beer was oh, no. this guy, John Green, a Detroit Pistons fan. Oh. But as Ron was charging in his direction, he was acting like he didn't just start this whole thing. This results in Ron attacking this guy, and honestly, I feel bad for him, because he was just cheering that Ron was going to go fight someone. Oh, you got to feel bad for the guy, damn. Then he straight up turned into the surprise Pikachu face as soon as he realized <laughs> Ron was about to fans and even the guy who originally threw the beer tried to hold Ron back. A fan from close range throws another cup of beer on Ron and then out of nowhere Steven Jackson comes up and punches that fan right in the face. Yeah! The fan didn't get knocked out. It looked like he connected pretty good. But he just runs away as fans try to hold Steven back from a Give him some. again. The brawl continues and Steven Jackson is still throwing punches at random fans. Bro, is this game still going on at the same time? It is, isn't it? Both team staff, security, and no, it's players not. continually try to restore order. So Artest makes his way back onto the court and two fans approach him. Ron instinctively squares up and knocks this guy. Oh, yeah, boy! What a fucking fight! Ron instinctively squares up. What is this fuck? What is this fan doing? Coming down to the court. What are you? What are you doing? You're not allowed on the court, mate. And knocks this guy right. Fuck up. yeah! That's what you got to do, man. You got to throw the first punch. Back. Jermaine O'Neal sees this going down and runs and tries to Superman punch the guy's friend. If O'Neal didn't slip here, I can only. Oh! What the damage of this punch? Could have done. Those guys got no place being on that court, man. Honestly, Get the hell off. it could off. have been potentially life-threatening. Thankfully, the game is called off, and the Pacer players start heading back to the locker room. And as they're heading back, fans start throwing popcorn and drinks on them. Damn, Ray man. Neal, again, still tries to fight a couple of them that threw it. But finally, players are off the court, and this disgraceful, but pretty entertaining ending to this game came to an end. The funniest part about this whole thing, though, is what Ron Artest had to say in the locker room. And did what I had to do, but the funniest part about it is going to make all y'all laugh. We get in the locker room, and we're sitting there. My legs all scratched up from hopping over the bleachers. Ron's sitting there calming down. His first question to me, do you think we're going to get in trouble? <laughs> <laughs> you know my reply? <laughs> you lucky we have a job. <laughs> He asked me that, and we all, the whole locker room was like, no, Ron, are you serious? <laughs> trouble? We, we passed trouble. We passed trouble. We finna get kicked out the league, and, you know, Defiance came down. Did you, were you... Shit, okay, so that's Meta World Peace. Did he, did, did he change his name to World Peace after doing that? And yes, Ron, serious punishment. I want to see that punch again, though, because that guy pissed me off coming down to the court. Deserved exactly what he got. And two fans approach him. Ron instinctively. The fuck are you doing, bro? Yeah! What a punch! Knocks this guy right on the Fuck yeah, he got him again, too. Good shit. Good shit, Mesa World Peace. Oh. Sorry, guys. 
And yes, Ron, serious punishments were made, as Ron Artest was suspended for the remainder of the season without pay. 55 games! Costing him $5 million, Steven Jackson was also suspended for 30 games, making him lose out on $3 million, and Jermaine O'Neal was suspended 25 games, and Ben Wallace was suspended for 6. And this incident... Ben Wallace, what a legend, Detroit legend. ...was so bad that it went to court. Everyone got off with only fines and community service, except for one guy, John Green, the man who started it all. He got 30 days in jail. Unlike Cedric Maxwell, who back in the 1981 Eastern Conference... Bro, that guy would have been like, that guy would have been like, I completely got away with that. And yet he gets 30 days in jail. <laughs> Damn. His finals was fighting for a rebound before being pushed out of bounds. And when he got pushed, he bumped into this fan who really didn't like it and threw something at him. Cedric just lost it and straight up tackles the guy right into the first row. Well, actually, he didn't do fuck all. Fans, security, and players try to calm everything down and thankfully succeed. But being this was so long ago, nothing really happened to Cedric. No suspensions were given out. And if he did get suspended, it would have been a big blow to the Celtics since they were- You can't touch the players, man. You can't touch the players. You can't throw things at the players. Down 3-2 in the series and needed this win and win game 7 to go on to the NBA Finals. If he was suspended, the Celtics honestly <laughs> might have never gone to the Fuck. Finals. Or if they- He's a bit old, man. You should have just left him. He did. Never have won the championship. Is that Maxwell again? Maxwell was Finals MVP. Now, Joel Embiid rattles players pretty often. I guess players don't like the fact that he talks so much trash. But he was attending the Philadelphia Eagles playoff win against the Atlanta Falcons and was playing around with fans before doing this. After only being slightly pushed and a fan intercepting a pass, Embiid comes at him at full force and pushes him into another dimension. Embiid really didn't have to push him that hard. It was so messed up. But actually, Embiid is not the only 76er player who had a problem with Eagles fans. Just recently, Mike Scott was at a tailgate in Philadelphia wearing a Redskins jersey. There is no information on how this fight started, but it's safe to assume it was because of his jersey. But here, Mike throws his initial punch, it doesn't connect, and this guy charges at him. And at this precise moment, he decides to reassess every decision he's ever made in life as Mike Scott easily punches him to the ground. I really wonder what goes through these guys' heads thinking- Fucking hell, what are you up to, bro? Six, eight, two the fuck, man? man? What, you gonna, you gonna gang bash this guy for going to a tailgate with an op with a, uh, opposing team's jersey? Now, I showed this clip in my last video, but I didn't explain the context of it. So NBA players always get heckled and they do their best to try to ignore it. They don't always, but this fan had something to say to Marcus, which he really didn't appreciate. Always, but this fan had something to say to Marcus, which he really didn't appreciate. The camera cuts back to that man and he's just laughing about it. Just disrespectful. But according to a witness, Marcus told his coach that he said something racist towards him. Of course he did. the fan claims he only said this. The fan extended an apology to Marcus for calling him that and volunteered to not attend any more games. In another video that was released, it does sound like you can hear the fan saying exactly what he claimed to have said, but it's still kind of hard to make out. <laughs> Now, Devin Booker and teammate Tyler Eulis got into a fight for honestly such a weird reason. So Tyler Eulis is holding the elevator for Devin and his friends to show up. These four guys are getting pretty irritated that Eulis was holding the elevator for quite some time and they decided to put him right into a headlock. And here comes Devin Booker to the rescue while trying to cover his face. But honestly, Devin, you're the only 6'6 guy out here, so it's pretty obvious it's you. So Ulyss now squares up against one of them, and his friend comes in and kicks him down while Ulyss throws a punch. He runs away, and that was that. Devin honestly rushed out that elevator looking like he was about to do something, but then just stood there the entire time. 
The guys leave the building and they continually chase them down the street. But for real though, thankfully Booker didn't do anything because yes. things could have gone much worse if he did. Finally, I know this isn't the NBA, but it was just too good not to include. It was the 2016 Chinese Basketball Association Finals. The Liaoning Leopards were returning to their hotel after the... Excuse me? Oh shit, that was a bit of a worry. Are we back? Are we back in action? I think we are. Uh, we're about to finish off this 8 times when NBA players actually fight fans video. Uh, my internet just got cut off because I didn't pay the bill. So uh, I just went and paid it, waited about an hour, and we're back. <laughs> so let's, let's continue. Let's continue this video, man. Yeah, kiss my ass! <laughs> Good not to Where are we? We're at the Chinese Basketball Nationals in 2016. It was the 2016 Chinese Basketball Association Finals. The Liaoning Leopards were returning to their hotel after defeating the Blue Whales. Blue Whale fans were standing outside heckling the players and some of the parents retaliated. This caused the fans to attack parents of the players and oh. because of this, the players got involved. The worst part about this Crazy. is, does anyone even know how to throw a punch here? <laughs> like, yeah, what the are fucking hammer fists. Doing? What the hell is this? I honestly don't know what's worse. The punches being thrown here, or the fans attacking the parents. The Chinese, they're meant to be martial arts experts. Just disrespectful. Anyways guys, that's the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I'm Handles. Until next time. Well cheers Handles, that was actually a really cool video, well done. I appreciate the commentary too. So uh, I want to say thank you to Handles Up. Um, yeah, I may as well subscribe. Million views, two months, well done. You would have got a fair chunk of uh, AdSense revenue, I think, for that one, and I've just helped you out a little bit more. So, guys, NBA fans, basketball fans out there, that was a little bit of fun. In the next one, we're going to look at NHL, and then following that, we've got a whole, whole bunch of uh, football-related videos. Today is my final day to do reactions for I don't know how much longer. I'm heading to New Zealand without my equipment. I'm just taking my camera. And, you know, that's the way that I want it to be. But before I go, I want to make all this content before I go so I can try and edit some of it whilst I'm away. But I won't have that pressure of having to actually make, create content um, whilst I'm away. So guys, wish me luck. I'm heading to New Zealand tomorrow. I want to say, have a fantastic day or a fantastic night wherever you're tuning in from. And I want to say a big thanks for tuning in because it means a lot. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.